Okay. All right, what is today about? Today is about uh, compensation and how it is on the uh, documents. Um, we're going to look exclusively at three documents. We're going to look at the buyer rep, and we're going to spend like three minutes on it. We're going to look at the listing agreement, and we're going to spend probably a good amount of time on it. And then we'll look at the PA and spend some time on that as well. Make sense? This is the fourth, third or fourth time we've taught this class. Um, and we're going to have expand. paper. First time you have paper. Yeah, so yeah. the last time we taught this was on 8-1. You might not have paper, that's okay. But if you have a computer, most of you will probably do this on computer. And if you don't have <laughs> either, we have some copies for you. All right, Heather, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to this, just that one page of the PA. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? It's a chain on my neck that I can't kind of play in with. So I guess you're right. I know it's like Dante. Thank you very much. I need to see. No, I also appreciate that all of you color match. Right? That's what we do. All right, here we go. You guys all know Kelly, right? Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Kelly. Um, Kelly also uh, owns Profile, and um, Profile is could be a great help. They're on the front end. They're seeing a lot of questions, which is why we get some questions. Remember, she's not a broker, and Profile is not a brokerage. They cannot do certain things for you. Like but, give you advice on what to fill out on your forms. <laughs> so um, so that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Um, all right. The first one is our exclusive buyer rep. Oops, sorry. And um, we're, we're, Kelly and I were talking about how we're going to do this. And some of it, I'm just going to open North Star is what I'm going to do right now. Um, some of it we're going to try to, to uh, explain as if Kelly is my client, right? So Kelly, Kelly is right. Kelly was my first trainer, Kelly and Dana. And one of the things I had to do before I could go meet with someone is I had to have a form on the table and be able to explain to them upside down what that what that says. This says this, this says this, this says this. Before I could do the consultation. We got really, really, really busy and uh, we stopped doing some best practice stuff. And uh, so we gotta get back to some of that. And when we do, this will all make sense. Remember, I'm delaying as I'm looking for others. Uh, um, remember, Change is change. It's not easy or hard. It's just different. And the mindset in which you go into this, or now are in it, by the way, effectively the 17th, everything really has to change. You should, by the way, if you're doing representing a new buyer or a new listing or you're writing a PA, you should be using these documents. On the 17th, all compensation leaves the MLS. Actually, on the 15th, and you have to have representation in paper form before you can show a house. So it can be a one-time. By the way, it's not a one-time showing because one-time showing is actually on the listing side. So that's not the right form. It can be exclusive with just the property written into it is probably a better way to go. Um, they said they're going to release a touring uh, thing in our form, but we haven't seen that yet. But it's not the one-time showing. If you try to do the one-time showing on your spot, that's going to confuse you because it's coming up with an agreement between you and the listing agent. You're not doing that. You're doing exclusive for this property. You can write that in there. Or you can do it for two weeks, one week, whatever you want to do on that. I shared this with my uh, with profile this morning, is to remember that like everyone is going through the change at the same time, and not everyone deals with it the same way. So like we should all just give each other grace as we're learning and as people are correcting each other, like be kind. <laughs> I like it. Be kind. Be kind. All right. What we're gonna look at first is the fire rep. 
Uh, and prior representation, exclusive, uh, standalone form is how I'm going to do it. If you pull that up on your computer, that would, might be helpful. Um, and if you have it in front of you on paper, that could be helpful too. Uh, so Kelly, this is our this is our contract. I'm glad we're decided to work uh, together through this. Uh, we just got some paperwork to to do to make this official. Obviously, if we're going to put today's date in here and put your name on this, and this is a relationship that you have with our brokerage, so we're putting Keller Williams Premier Realty in there. I know you mentioned you didn't want to go too long, and uh, I always do a six month minimum just because if we find your house today, we want to make sure. Well, if we start looking at it, we want to make sure that we're able to do that. Uh, are you comfortable with six months? Yes. Fantastic. So we'll put that in there. Our obligation then is for me to take, make every reasonable effort to help you find the property and act as your fiduciary for that. And then your obligation is to work with me and actually when we find it to uh, go ahead and purchase that pop property. Make sense? Yes. Wonderful. And obviously, because I'm working for you, I get paid, right? That makes sense. That makes sense. Great. There's been a, you might have seen it in the news. There's been um, lots of, of stuff about um, NAR, National Realtors, getting in trouble and uh, settling on a lawsuit. Have you heard some of that? Maybe a little. A little bit. Great. Well, one of the reasons that uh, that was there is because in other areas of the country, uh, they weren't really being um, fully disclosing how buyer's agents were getting paid. Minnesota, we've had forms just like this for a long time, but I want to make sure you fully understand how I'm getting compensated when I go to work for you. Sound good? Okay. All right. This first line here is about a retainer fee. I don't charge a retainer fee. If you don't buy a home, you don't owe me anything. Okay. Great. This next part then is what do you owe me should you buy a home? And uh, that my compensation, as I thought before, is 3%. Make sense? Yes. Wonderful. And uh, so that's what goes in this line number two here is, is the, uh, the 3%. Buyers purchase the agree, and we're going um, we're gonna to do that. Say, if I show you some properties, I know we signed a six-month uh, slot, but if I show you some properties and then you don't move on them, this next part is protecting this working relationship so that you just don't wait for a contract to end and go buy another house, right? So I always put 100 day, 180 days in here. It just says, hey, I showed you that property. Um, and if you go ahead and buy it, you might as well use me since we've got to make sense. Okay. All right. So, uh oh. Yeah, small. Good. Any questions on this so far? How, where does the 3% come from? Great. The 3% is the cost in which I, yeah, this is the next one. How do I get paid? Right. Um, anyone know why my next page isn't showing up? What did I do? <laughs> All right, here we go. The next way is, uh, is this. Great. This next line here on 38 is, it talks about how I get paid, and one of the ways that I can get paid is directly from you, right? Ultimately, you and I are in agreement. 3% is what I'm going to get paid to, to show your home. The good news for you, uh, especially is what you need to bring to the table, is sometimes I get compensated by a co-oping broker, which means another brokerage who's listing the house says, hey, it's important to us that we have someone showing these homes that we're going to compensate them. And that could be 3%, that could be 2.5%, that could be 2%, but whatever they offer on the, on the one side is, is part of that, okay? So if they're offering zero, then you owe me 3%. If they offer 3%, then you don't owe me anything out of pocket. So that's 3% on top of the purchase price? So that's 3% on top, yeah. And oftentimes that's already been negotiated between the listing agent and the seller of as to what they're going to compensate me. Okay. So okay. if they compensate you zero, then it's 3% more than the purchase price. Right. So that's one way. So this one button right here is going to be shell. Now, another way that we can get compensated is um, from, so that's from the agent to compensate me, is from the seller themselves. So on the purchase agreement, when we write the purchase agreement, there's going to be a spot on there that says uh, the seller will compensate buyer's broker blank percent. And in there, we can write into that blank how I get compensated. 
since you owe me 3%, I would put on there, let's get 3% as part of the deal, which ultimately will reduce the amount of money you need to bring to closing. Okay. Sound good? Yes. So awesome. I need closing costs and commission, and maybe we'll get some of that covered. Closing costs, yes, right? Your title, all those different things we talked about. And commission and how I'm going to get paid. Oftentimes, I can negotiate that. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at residential property. You want me to set up title. All this is the same. Agency, we agree to dual agency. I work with other people. You are not exclusive with anyone else. Here, what am I going to put? Broker admin fee. Broker admin fee. Remember, you cannot get compensated anything beyond this agreement. You can't get compensated anything beyond this agreement. Our building is wonderful lately, by the way. It smells great and it makes weird sounds. <laughs> um, so that's that's a point on this. And you guys saw on the spot up here, I sorry, I didn't even, now that we don't have highlighting anymore, um, where is the spot? You cannot take more than is on this agreement. You cannot take more than is on this agreement, including your broker admin fee. So make sure your broker admin fee is on this agreement. Otherwise, it's the same. So you forget to put the broker admin fee in If you forget to put broker admin fee, we will collect it because that's what we do from you, and you would be responsible for that. So line 130, back on that whatever page that is, are they taking us off of page four? That's where we put our broker admin fee is four ninety nine yes. is what the office collects. Yeah, four ninety nine is what the office collects. Yep. yep. And if we don't put it in there, we pay. If you don't put it in there, we can't collect it from them, so we collect it from you. No, so that's a hundred dollars. What's that? So a KW disclosure is great, but it is a what? Disclosure. It is disclosure, not an agreement. So that is not enough. The disclosure is not enough to collect whatever you have in the buyer's uh, representation or buyer's whatever kind of agreement you have with them. Um, that's what we're allowed to collect. You want us to call it a commission? Like, should we call it a broker administrative commission? So we changed our language on all of our stuff to say commission and not form because that's what we were told. And it does confuse the agents because they're like, what? But that's what we heard through the lawsuit is you can't call it a fee. It's a commission. Oh. Yeah. So uh, this is a can of the worms thing. Though. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just want to make it a template. Yeah. I would I would call it a BAC, right? Um, just put a BAC in because it's on your disclosure what that is. Um, there, <laughs> <laughs> disclosure. I know, but, but you can put BAC. I know what a, we've talked about this before. It's BAC. You can put broker admin fees or compensation as well. Um, the challenge with this, banks, banks are getting in more trouble than realtors at this point. But the, the thing is, is if you're charging a compensation, you have to have a reason for charging this extra, extra compensation. And that compensation, and I, that compensation should only go to, if it's a commission, should only go to that commission spot. It shouldn't be split. And I know we haven't dug into this, so I'm saying it's a can of worms. There might come a day we're not able to do that. And there might be come a day where you're not able to add extra feed onto your 499 that the office charges you. We're not there yet, but there might come a day. Good can of worms. So call it a broker administrative compensation. Sure. Yep. That's great. What does your say? Broker admin compensation? Commission. Commission. Compensation. I like compensation. Good. Did we just say administration? Do we have a thing for it? Yeah. Every, <laughs> a lot of people just pay it, but the people that do argue it is. Aren't you getting 60 grand from your broker already? What's this fee for? 100%. Yeah. I get it, and it's true. Preach. I, I, I get it. And then this is a fee my broker has charged me. And, and Shane, Shane if, I, if that were the argument, that's why I would say, of course, then, Shane, you only ever charge a 499 because if you get the 60 grand, you don't need the extra 500 bucks. 
I just want to support Kevin a little bit on, on one of the things that he said. The most important thing to the Department of Commerce, which is the this is where you're going to get in trouble, is that there needs to be an explanation as to where that what that fee is for with every fee that's charged um, in commerce. And so that's a critical component. So whatever you decide to name it, make sure you can explain where it's going based on the name. So if it's going to the brokerage, then yeah, make it a broker administration administrative compensation fee, yeah. not fee. Yeah, yeah. I just say profit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Company profit. I mean, yeah. Well, that's you're lying if you say anything different. <laughs> If, if, it's if it's profitable, right? And I was gonna say there are many, yeah. there are many market centers that not that many, but there are some. <laughs> All right, buyers, <laughs> buyer stuff, we get it. Everyone understands you have to have some kind of written uh, agreement, whether that be facilitator, whether that be, hey, I'm a customer, you don't represent me, uh, and if they don't represent you, then what you, know, you got to figure out is, if I don't represent you, how am I getting paid now? Right, so you want to make sure you have that uh, that spot, but you have to have a written agreement and with a amount that you're getting paid for your service. Go ahead. So are we still doing the the the, the waivers form, that two page form that also has broker M and fee on that too? Yes, a waiver is simply a disclosure. It is not an agreement. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you twice. The same reason like agency has that spot about uh, uh, child predator spots where you can go predatory offenders. And so does the, the PA as predatory vendors. Multiple spots. Questions? Can we move on from the buyer agreement? All right. So as a buyer, if you're a buyer's agent, you want to make sure how am I getting paid? I can get paid by the buyer at closing. I can get paid by the uh, sellers at closing, or I can get paid by the co-op agent at closing. Those are the three ways I can get paid. Oh, I have a question. So the other day I got an email that somebody was doing a 4% buyer payout. Yeah, that's great. So, but if you have a buyer agreement that says yeah. you're only at 3%, yeah. do they, can they just say, well, I guess we don't have to They can't it. collect it, can they? Because okay. you're only allowed to collect what's on your agreement. So you can amend it. What you can do is you can amend your agreement. Now, Kelly, stay. I know we're under agreement for 2.7. These people are actually willing to pay me 4%. Does that mean I'm paying 1% more for the house? Right. So now you have a conversation of, hey, I'd like you to amend this. And what I would say is, where do you find the win-win in that? And if your win is that you should get all of it and your client should not get any, well, maybe that's a different conversation. Maybe you would call and say, Kelly, I want you to be a client for life, high five. They're offering 4%, you're willing to pay 2.7, and we're gonna have 1.3 go on a reduction of your house. How do you feel about that? Fantastic. That's one way you could do it. Hey, Kelly, high five. We're at 2.7, they're at, uh, offering 4%. You wanna split that? Sure. Great, win-win. Doesn't matter what you do with it, just remember that you're now in negotiation again with your client who you got to raise, they're paying the same for the house. So you might want to be able to have a negotiation around that. Go ahead. We can amend. Yes, yeah, so you can always good. amend anything before closing. <laughs> There's, actually, <laughs> There's a new amendment form just for this. That's right. That's one form you can amend a listing agreement, you can amend a P, uh, buyer rep, or you can amend uh, whatever kind of other representation agreement you have. Promise. So, so just for clarification, um, it, it says in the buyer rep agreement yeah. that that once we're paid that amount, 2.7, or whatever we're paid, it reduces the buyer's obligation. The buyer's it obligation- It reduces the- Buyer's obligation, yeah. Buyer's obligation at this point, based on this contract, is 2.7%. Right. If a listing broker is paying me 4%, that has nothing to do with my buyer. Except it does now. Except it does now. Legally, they say you are not allowed to take more from that uh, agent uh, because of this contract. From that brokerage? That's from that like, brokerage. That's like, well, so then do we have to send this where to, the does it say that? To, the, to the listing broker? 
You do not have to. <laughs> what about deals that we currently have under contract? And that's where I'm because that, like Lennar's giving me a bonus for being the first uh, buyer in the development. Like that, I'm assuming that should be disclosed. That needs to be disclosed, yeah. They've always had to be disclosed. We've just never had to match it on the buyer rep agreement. Yeah, the and, and this is a challenge because we know they've they've op oftentimes people collect 2.7%, right? Is what they have the agreement with the, the client. Hopefully everyone has submitted, has had buyer representation paper in the past because it's part of our compliance. What has happened is some places have said, hey, we'll pay out 2.5. And we as agents have said, okay, I'll take 2.5. Other places have said, hey, we'll pay out 3%. And we have said, okay, I'll take 3%. And it gets disclosed on the Ulta. But really, if we, if your buyer would come back and say, hey, we agreed at 2.7. I see you got paid 3. We would be in trouble. That would be an ethics thing. That would be uh, a challenge. Why didn't you disclose that to your client? We could get in trouble for that. Now it says and the Alta isn't disclosure. Alta is not, by the way, not well, that's right. <laughs> not right. That's right. But if you look at line 45, Rick, uh, these are this is the new line, 45 and 46. Got it. Broker may not receive compensation from brokerage services provided to a buyer from any source that exceeds the amount or rate agreed in this contract. I get it. And I don't disagree with that, considering from an ethical standpoint, it's important that our clients understand. You know that we may be getting more if you're purchasing this home or that, that home. There you know. lines on here? Can you yeah. write what if? So if we have two point seven in the compensation, yeah, we write that in and say if 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 they compensate more, I make more. more. Yeah, then yeah. you can't. You cannot do it on the on this agreement. You can only do it in an amendment. Can we circle back to Bethany? And well, what if we write it ahead of time? Yeah, like what if we write it when we're signed the buyer agreement? Yeah, in the event, yeah. in the event, compensation by the listing broker exceeds two seven eight, yeah. collects. They the say no, because it's it's contradictory yeah. to that that language there. They're saying I love it when things make sense. Yeah, and he walks out. <laughs> two more agreements you got to learn about. Back to their question: If the if you already had a Previous buyer rep signed that yeah. does not have line 45 and 46, and you're collecting a bonus. As long as you're disclosing it, do you have to amend the buyer rep? You don't. Point? You don't have to. So the buyer reps you have right now are legal, binding, all whatever. Um, however, the same thing on disclosure is if you're getting more than you you agreed to on that agreement, you need to. I'm not because just to clarify, I was just doing the math. It's a two percent payout, and they're giving me a five percent bonus, yeah. and my buyer reps is two point seven. Like, you know who what that sounds like? A national builder. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the compensation disclosure that you have signed with the purchase agreement would be the disclosure of the difference in commission, correct? It, it's a uh, that's a disclosure on our common. Yes, but it's a disclosure. It's not renegotiating this contract. Right, but that would suffice for the disclosure of the our conference. current our current current stuff. Yes, but not in the future. Can't okay. take more. So in the event that we have a three percent contract they're offering for by the way, that I've heard not just from you, I've heard uh buyers, uh co-op agents are compensating more than the two point seven. This was Bethany's theory. Yeah. That you I if you're I think it's gonna give everybody a pay raise. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Really good. Yeah. So that differential of 1% then is I don't think so. an option for the buyer to recoup. What's that? No, because I think they're going yeah. to Because they're already offering. Now what are we doing with that offering, that money of offer, that offering that they made? Right. You can buy more did you should put four percent. That's great. If I if you think you can get your buyer client to agree to four percent, may you owe me four percent when we close. Not like we told them to it if they were well, let you. could you not do it the opposite way? I'm gonna take four percent and then others say if there is no payout by the seller, I will take a two point seven. I mean that's yeah, you can't you can take less than on your thing. Right. I, so the yeah. challenge is I look at you and say so you're gonna charge me four percent? Well, not really. I'm not really gonna charge you four percent. Well, that's why in the other you say. And then I say, well, wait, wait a minute. Then why are we putting it on there? 
Well, because I might get paid more than you, and I I want to wait. If it's only two point seven percent, why don't we just agree on two point seven percent right now? That's a good question. Jordan has a question, which we've done on other contracts. Um, can you do can you do um from two to four percent? No, there's no slidings. Contracts that this is they're getting on it. They're like, there's by the way, there are no TBDs on listing agreements. Thank you. Never. If if uh, <laughs> if you put TBD on it, you will not have compliance. It will go right back to you. And your transaction coordinator will return it as well. No, no TBDs. I will return it as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying the opposite of what Shane suggested, where we could get paid more, you can, we can get paid less to protect the buyer. Could we write that in? I'm taking 4% if compensated from the, the seller or the listing agent. Yeah. But so, if it's from you, it'll be 2.7. Yeah. So now as as a seller, right? Now, now we're on the purchase agreement, I'm going to negotiate 4% which goes right to the buyer's cost. I mean, if you can get 4%, go for it. Right. I don't I don't like playing with the right if we're negotiating yeah. I don't I don't like playing with the Kevin, who's doing our compliance review now? Huh? Who's Kevin. doing our compliance review? Currently Matt is reviewing our compliance. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to listing contract. Well, that idea. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to fill it in yes. with examples. While he's pulling it up, can we still do the scale for the list price? No, it needs to be a firm price on the listing agreement. Yeah, yeah. So if I were if I were scripting on that, I'd just say, hey, let's we're going to choose a price in here because in order to have a contract, we have to have an actual price. When we get to the time we're going to list your home, we know that we got to go on at the current market, and we can always come back and adjust. Right. So they might say if it's a five hundred thousand dollar home and you think, well, maybe we're probably gonna be somewhere around uh four eighty-five or four seventy whatever, then they just put five hundred in there. And you can always come down. You can always go up whatever it might be, however you want to do it. But it has to be an actual number, no sliding scale. Just getting sharp on these things, right in line. All right. Ready listing contract? Mm -hmm. Most of this is exactly the same. The date, pages, city, the property, the seller, the broker, contract stars, contract ends, price has to be an actual amount, right? So we're going to list this property for an actual amount. Okay, what do you want to do? Okay. And then we can do terms, right? Whatever, whatever, da, 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 da. We put our terms in there. Sound good? Kelly wants these to fill her out. See, form side, just let's go to the other side. All right, fill that out, all this kind of stuff we've gone through. Do we want this to be on the internet? Yeah. Yes. Do you want this to uh, address to be on the internet? Do you want there to be an automated valuation of the property? Automated valuation may be just right next to it. Do you want that on there? Maybe. Maybe. Do you guys say yes or no on that? Yeah. You say yes? Yeah. Because I say yes, but we want to go every possible website there is, right? Yeah. Well, what if they say my house is worth 300 instead of 500 where I have it listed? No. We'll deal with that. That's right. Uh, do you want comments to be able to be put on there? Yes. All right. Does anyone else do yes, 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 no, or anyone do a no to any of those? We do a no at the end. No on option four? I see that quite a bit. That's why. All right. Is it listed for lease currently? No. 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 And you know what? Agree not to put it on lease while we're at. Well, Kevin, if you check no on four, Zillow and Trulia will not list that property. Yeah, that's Correct. what I'm confused. No. Okay. All of our listings are on Zillow yeah. and all those sites. That's literally so that, like, they can't comment and um, edit them. I understand. But they're on those sites. Who is they? They're consumers. Can you ever edit it? 
Uh, Zillow a long time ago used to be that you could say you were the homeowner and yeah. you could edit anything. <laughs> And 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 at the, probably two years ago, if you checked no, it would not show up on Zillow. That, yeah, that's yeah. what it, what I was taught. Yeah, I've always said no, and it's always done. Yeah, we're definitely on Zillow. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. when they're to change it, that would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, your obligations to work exclusively with me, allow access to the property. Come up with a plan, follow through on the plan so we get your home sold. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Record into the properties. During your showing time, I see you have um, a, uh, what are they called? Some doorbell. Ring right? doorbell. Ring. You have a ring right out front. And I tell you what, oftentimes people like to leave the house and talk about the, what's going on, what they thought of your house right on the front porch. This is saying you are not allowed to record that. Okay, so I'm saying that to you too. If you're with your buyer, it might not be great to go have strategic conversations right on the front porch in front of a ring doorbell, right? Also, if you have cameras in your house, you want to take all of those down. Make sense? Yes. Fantastic. What did you say? Sorry. Baby cameras. Baby cameras are another one. Yeah, camera. Yes. For example, a baby camera. Yes. Perfect. Compensation. This is, again, where we get to talk about the compensation. Again, on this side, we do not, I do not charge a retainer fee. So I put zero on the retainer fee. Kelly. Yes. When we sell your house, we've talked just side about the buy side already, right? When we sell your house, um, the person that's going to oftentimes bring a buyer is called a buyer's agent. Same way I'm going to help you. And what we get to decide today is um, if we want to, if you want to compensate that buyer's agent. Um, not only that, but how you would like to do so. Um, historically, and it's been advantageous for the seller to compensate a buyer agent. May I explain to you why? Sure. Fantastic. Um, oftentimes a buyer agent, and you remember buying your first home, right? The struggle of saving up all that money and being ready to go buy a house. How, how exciting that was. Yeah. Um, do you remember what you put down on your first house? 10%. 10%. Right. And that's probably what you had at the time. You bought the best house that you could with that amount of down payment. Right. And so, um, when we talk about compensating or not, oftentimes um, that same buyer, just like you were, uh, is going to be working with a buyer's agent and have to compensate them. And so if we don't compensate, say, the 2.7%, that means they have to bring additional cash to closing, and uh, which may keep them from being able to buy your house. And we want everyone who was interested in your house to be able to buy it if the price is right for you, right? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So I think it makes tons of sense to compensate the buyer's agent. Would you agree? Yes. Do you have any questions about that? You look like you might have a question. Well, I'm deciding if I'm going to ask my question or not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ask it, ask it. So we just went through the buyer rep. Yeah. What happens if I pay for, as a seller, I pay for the buyer's agent for my house, but then I also have to pay you because the seller of the house That's I'm going to buy doesn't pay. Right. So now you're going, where, where's all my cash coming in, right? Now, that's a bit, that's a very fair question. In fact, that, that actually shows why it's important for um, buyers, for sellers to compensate that buyer agent. And just like you and I are having this conversation, I imagine that when other people are meeting with their sellers, they're saying the same thing. So I, I truly believe more often than not, um, I'm going to be able to be compensated either on the front end or we'll be able to negotiate that as part of the agreement. So that's the option now that you get to as a seller decide. When I sell a home, I charge 4%. And, and so- Is that negotiable? Things are always negotiable. How, what would you like that to be? I just want to know. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> I'm willing to negotiate my 4%. Okay. Great. Um, by the way, this might be a great spot where you do like Bethany had and said, here are the different options for my charge. All right. 
So now that we know what I am getting paid, what we have to figure out is what are we going to offer to the buyer's agent? There's two ways we can do it. One is you and I get to have that conversation right now. And you can decide, Kevin, let's on the front end offer, we're going to 3%. Okay, or 2.7%, we'll keep it at two. Let's go on the front end and offer 2.7%. And the reason you might choose that is because if you do, we can market that everywhere on the front end. We'll let everyone, we'll put it on our sign writer, we'll put it on the Facebook pages, we'll put it in social media and everywhere. All the marketing that I put out, I'll put on there 2.7%. That's a weird number, why did you pick 2.7? It is a weird number, it's just, See, and don't say historically that's what it's been, because that could, so go three, I like round numbers. You like round numbers? Yeah. Let's go 3%. <laughs> 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 I like round numbers. Let's, see, let's pick a different number. We'll go 3%. Sure. Um, great, so we're 3%. Okay. Um, <laughs> I could say it's more than 2.5 and less than 3. Okay, yeah, we'll keep, yeah. All right, now we cheat. If cheat. I was never in real estate and someone said they would request 2.7, I would be like, why 2.7? Like, it's such a weird number. Valid. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I actually, now my brain's going, how would I respond? Yeah. Nice job. Because we never. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we get to decide. We know we're, we're offering compensation to the buyer's agent. We get to decide do we want to do it on the front end and we can market it all of that. Or or another option is to um, see what, what they request. And if we wait and see what they request, the positive of that is you might actually compensate the buyer's agent less. Than, than we would if we were on the front end. Well, I get less showings then? Well, I don't, here's the thing. If you believe that marketing and offering the compensation and everything um, is going to bring more buyers, let me tell you why it might. It's not because the buyer's agent is saying, um, well, I'm not gonna show a home if it's less, but what it does do if we put it on the front end, it alleviates some of those concerns that you as a buyer might have, right? You might go, well, I don't want to see this because they aren't making an offer of compensation to you. I now have to think and allows your mind as the buyer to kind of spiral and, and maybe say, I don't want to see that house. Okay. And that's one of the reasons we might want to offer it up front. Okay. So everyone sees it. Yeah. The reason for doing it the other way is because we may be able to offer uh, less, by the way, in a seller's market, uh, your buyers might be more inclined to not offer it up front, but to offer it in, inside the PA. What we know is you're willing to pay it. We just got to decide when to pay it. Okay. Do you have a preference of when you'd like to do that? Um, let's do it up front. Up front. Great. So, uh, By the way, we're going to do this again and not have it up front so we can fill out the form both ways. Great. So the total compensation then is 7%, right? Four for me, three for them. Okay. So broker's compensation is 7% or rather than figuring out the number when we don't know what it's going to be when we sell your house, we're just going to put zero in there. That's whichever greater. You're going to get more. That is always the goal. See, this is where we're in it together. The more the help your home sells for it, the more I make. We're in agreement on this. <laughs> Okay. Line 1.2 says, if the seller agrees then to pay the buyer's broker compensation, which you are doing, right? Yeah. If the seller agrees to pay the, uh, the buyer's broker's compensation directly to the buyer, which is, uh, scratch that. I should have read the whole thing. If the seller agrees to pay the buyer's broker compensation directly to the buyer, which I said we might see it on the PA, um, then the seller's obligation to pay me the compensation from lines 119 to 120 is reduced by the amount of this. And what that's saying is we because we've just established that the total is going to be 7%. It's not going to be more than 7%. I will say, hey, I'm going to share a compensation, but what we might see is the buyer put it on the PA. But we were going to advertise. Right. We're going to advertise it. We're going to do everything. And you know what I can tell you? We might see it on the PA. If we see it on the PA, 
And rather than countering and doing all that stuff, if you pay it out that way, then I will take less 2.7%. Yeah, right. yeah, huh? Yeah. Or, sorry, 2%. I was on my spot. Okay, let me go through this. Now this shows, okay? This is saying I agree to list the house for 7%. My total compensation is never going to, my portion of that is never going to be four, more than 4%. If we get a PA that says they're requesting on the PA, they're requesting uh, that the seller pay them directly, it can go and reduce my portion down 3%, which makes it 4% total. That's what this line is saying. It's a confusing line until we go to the next spot. Total broker's compensation, 7%. If the seller agrees to pay buyer broker compensation directly to the buyer, then the seller's obligation to pay compensation uh, as specified in lines 119, shall be reduced by 3%. Okay, this, this in here is super, it's confusing on the front end. The lawyers know it's confusing. The brokers told them we should take this out. Doesn't make sense to have in here, but that's what it's doing. Hey, you're putting 7%, whatever you pay out on the PA, it reduces my amount to that. It is. It's pretty much redundant, yes. Because, and I argue if we have it at all, we should have it underneath here. Cooperating broker, the total broker compensation shall offer compensation. If shall, the compensation to cooperating broker should be click 3%. And then the next one, blank or no to cooperating brokers assisting. Yeah, but the, the, the reason, okay, Danielle and I are speaking. So if the seller agrees to pay the buyer's broker directly, rather than the seller's broker paying the buyer's broker, correct? Yes. So in other words, they're covering their butt in case that's what it is. Yes. Um, the yeah, in case they don't have an agreement that says, "Hey, let's not offer this up front." Right. 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 Um, then the seller can see the buyer directly. Right. So here you go. If seven percent, let's let's do let's if doing co-op. If seven percent co-op. If sellers, then I say I'm offering co-op. I've negotiated with my seller at doing co-op, we now see it on the PA, and they're offering this. I, by the way, if this happens, I'm not signing a co-op agreement plus this, right? There's there's not that. Um, I put it on the PA that I want 3%. Buyer agent puts on there. They want 3%. My seller says, I love the offer. It says they pay 3%. Um, but I already said 7% to you. I said, don't worry about it. We have this in our line. Whatever we pay out there reduces my portion, right? So that's agreement on that spot. Then the <laughs> spot here is I'm paying out 3% of the seven to this both says facilitator and representing. But okay, let's, let's go through some real life scenarios. So we have this filled out. And the buyer's agent is uh, calls and says, hey, I want to show your property at 123 Main Street. Kevin says, great, we're offering, they ask, are you offering compensation? Kevin says, yes, we're Fantastic. offering 3%. Yep. Here is my cooperating broker compensation email over it. Yep. Yes. Then buyer's agent writes up an offer, does not need to put it on line 406. 100% does not need to put it on for what on for yes. But if they do, they're getting 6% versus the 3%. If they do, as a seller. If they do, if I've already sent that co-op agent thing over and I said, no, I, I'm paying it here. Now what I'm doing is I'm countering that and saying, I'm, my seller's not paying that and I'm paying that. It's one or the other. If I didn't send my co-op agent thing over and, and we don't have an agreement there or nothing in writing that says, then I, then I can leave it there. Or I can say, hey, let's counter 
I already made it clear I'm paying this. Comp I've offered the compensation right here. We're taking that off. If I'm countering with the seller and we're going to counter and I'm going to reduce that 3%, my purchase price probably is not going to reduce. I'm just going to send you a counter so to remove this line's compensations over here. Right? So, that, so, so, so here's what I'm saying. That call right there says, hey, are you offering a cooperating broker, uh, uh, cooperating uh, compensation? If you get a yes, then don't put it on the PA because now you have good news for your buyer. We don't have to offer more for the seller to get the same spot. They're already compensating me that way. Right? Be, be professional. Go ahead. But you want to make sure that you get that email. Yeah, that and when we're talking about an email, is there a, is there a specific form or there, it's there, not an email? It is a form. A form. There is a specific okay. form. I just want to make sure. So you want to make sure you've got that in hand. Yeah, and don't, and don't submit it with your offer. Like, oh. because the reason you don't want to submit it with your offer is because it has nothing to do with the seller and your buyer. It has If you're doing a cooperative, it's between the two brokerages. Wow. So, Still needing to be signed by you guys, the brokers, yeah. by you. Right. In this office. Yeah, and some they might not allow it, but it, it's going to be a. And remember, by the way, also remember there are there's a big brokerage that has said, and there's another big brokerage that said the opposite. There's a big brokerage that said we're not paying out cooperating commissions. We're not going to do it. And then another uh, broker say, well, that's why you want to be with us, because we allow our agents to do what's best for their clients. So, so you're going to see it multiple ways. Well, there's a from the listing agent getting that form over saying there's a compensation. I feel like we are going to be held up submitting offers for weight for that. You may, or, or you might be also be saying, yes. If, if we're not professionals, then there's going to be a challenge. If we list the house and then go on an island for four days and, and yeah, there could be a challenge. You got to be able to pick up a phone. You got to be able to answer a phone. You got to be able to have a conversation. And um, my suggestion then is put it on the PA. So we were offering for our agents that were writing. They were calling the listing agent, asking if there was a commission. At this point, it's on the MLS, right? But we wanted to make sure we had all the right forms. And the listing agent said, yes, but I don't have that form. The buyer's agent was adding it to the offer and just doing it like a lead-based yeah. paint that wasn't done yeah. previously. So they were filling out the buyer's section, putting the commission that the listing agent said, and then sending it the opposite direction. Right. I I uh, I don't mind it being part of the package at all, but it's not it's not a contract that should have in the same signing. Just like your compensation disclosures, really they don't belong in your offer packet. Um, you need them here, but the, the compensation disclosure is between you and your client, not between you and the home seller. Um, so that shouldn't necessarily be in there as either. Um, so, especially with all this going on, it will ease a buyer's mind to see that form. Like, I actually think... I, yeah, legal legal has just told us, do not include them. Make sure your agents aren't including them in there. It's not a contract that... A buyer's mind, the opposite. I mean, it can go in the email. It just can't go in yeah. your, yeah, your you offer can PDF. It can be a separate attachment. We're going to be more transparent, but we're going to be yeah, less transparent. Yeah, we're going to be transparent. Yeah, transparent. But remember, the only, <laughs> only people that you want to have stuff are people that are party to that contract. So on a purchase agreement, party to the contract are the seller and the buyer. On a listing agreement, party to the contract are the listing agent and the seller. Part, um, party to a contract on a buyer's agreement is a uh, buyer's agent and the buyer. And so you don't want to send those forms to include different people because they're not privy. They're not part of that conversation. So if there are some brokerages that have stated, hey, we're not on. Yeah, we're going to do that one right oh, now. That's what I yeah. Think. Okay. okay. Redo. All right. Charge 4%. We charge 4%. And what we're going to do is we know that you're willing to pay 
uh, if need be, but we're going to wait till we see the purchase agreement. I want to keep it a secret. want to keep it a secret. Yeah, that's fine. I, I have a question on the secret uh, part. Um, no, I'm not even going to ask the question. Here's the deal. I talked to John Butler about this. He's an OP of our spot. He gets to decide ultimately uh, what we're going to do on the forms. For a long time, we've had a minimum of um, you pay out 2.7%, right? That's all changed. That's because it was cooperating agent to cooperating agent. That That's changed. Now we're not saying that anymore. There's not a minimum payout. What we know is that when people want to sell their house, it's going to be on the PA and we're oftentimes most, I would I would say 90 plus percent of the time, that seller is going to end up compensating the buyer's agent, right? So if it's not in co-op, the next spot it's going to be is on the PA. And that's what this is, okay? We're gonna pay the listing agent 4%. Whatever you then, Kelly, offer to uh, pay on the PA reduces my amount by zero. That's what goes in there. Reduces my amount by zero. I'm not, we are, we're not negotiating the buy side right now. We're only negotiating mine. We came to the agreement, I get paid 4%. As Bethany said, my negotiation skills were awesome. <laughs> and I went from 2% to three. So, uh, so that makes sense there, right? Now, I'm gonna change these. Sorry, I should have had these erased right away. Uh, of that total compensation, no, that's, that's a no. Oh, that. Thank you. Uh, of that total broker's compensation, I'm not going to offer my 4%. I'm not splitting that. And uh, so we don't even need this next spot because this is if shall. But you can go ahead and put zeros in there, by the way. A zero, zero. Okay. okay. So this is how we would fill it out if the seller says, absolutely not. I'm never paying a buyer's agent. Or I want to see what the buyer's agents send over on the PA. Where's Brahma? <laughs> Brahma is a big fan of uh, of we pay a buyer's agent. He's a huge, I'm not going to work with a client that doesn't offer compensation to a buyer's agent. I love that part, right? I love it. It's like the same person that says, I'm never going to sell my property for uh, less than a million dollars. And then they get an uh, offer, and they only got one offer, and it's for $950,000. $950,000. What do you think they're doing? They're selling their property because that's realistic. That's the spot. In the same way, that's how it's going to be with the PA. It doesn't matter if someone says, I'm never going to compensate a buyer's agent. Great. What's important to you in that statement, Kelly, is I'm hearing you say you want to net the most amount of money possible, right? Great. With every offer that comes in, I'm going to give you a net sheet so you can look exactly what it's going to cost or what you're going to profit. You change your conversation about list price after this conversation. The second offer part. After you do list price first, then it. You mean this? Yeah, you, you fill in the list price on page one and you fulfill out the compensation on page what, four? Yeah. Five, four, three. Just going up. And so do you go back up to page one? Well, I don't I don't know why what makes you ask that question. Because traditionally the compensation for buyers is included in the price of a home. Yeah. But now if buyers potentially are paying their own compensation, that might be fifteen or twenty or thirty thousand dollars less than what it is. So just see how that shakes out. That's the plan. That's what I would do. I would say this is what I look think we can sell your home for. This is what the market says. And the market's obviously gonna have to adjust with another two point whatever, or we'll see how that it gets split up. But I think it makes sense to go, we're gonna market your home at this part. Then what buyer's agents are going to do, they're going to either offer that, put it on there, or they're going to offer, they're going to offer 3% more than that, or 2-7% more, whatever that looks like. Yeah, this is sticking with me. Your question is, why 2.7? Yeah. 
now I have like three in my head. Why would I not just charge three all the time? I, yes, I like it. <laughs> I like round numbers. I like it. Good. Questions? Questions? So, now we'll ask you. Who is our volunteer? Someone will raise their hand. I want this to be so easy that it's not even a hard to volunteer. Yes. Ben. <laughs> ben, yeah. you're the listing agent. Yeah. Okay? Tell me what I owe you. Percent. Six percent. Okay, and Ben, will you be sharing this compensation with the other side then? It's 2.7 percent to the buyer's broker. Perfect. Ben, tell me how to fill out this form. Line 116. Six percent. Well, that's a, a cost, a retainer fee. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, zero. Okay. <laughs> Line 119. Six percent. Six percent. What can I put in here? Zero. Zero, great. What can I put in here? If seller, if, if it's on the zero, right? Then 2.7? You can leave this blank or you can put on here this one, zero, yep, this, sorry. Percentage? 2.7. 2.7, great. Down here? Down. Shall. Percentage that it's going to? 2.7. 2.7. And are you paying facilitators? No. Yes. <laughs> so, so here's a challenge on the facilitation. You want to pay double though, right? No, it's one or the other. Yeah, it's because it's whoever is assisting or representing. Uh, so remember, an agent can assist someone in this process without representing them. And we never, in historically, have asked for those. Hey, I know you were doing the work behind, but can you show me your representation? Were you representing them, or were you just facilitating them? Uh, but Look at the MLS, oftentimes you paid out to a buyer's agent, but the facilitator would not be. Ben, does that look right to you? I thought should be no. What's that? You got the whole thing. I'm saying, saying you won't know if they're, I mean, you're not. Publicly putting it out on a on a spot, you would you would on on your purchase agreement, you could have that spot on. I yeah I don't know how many of you guys have someone facilitating a buyer very often. Anyone? I don't think you can get a ton. Of, you usually see it if you're facilitating on both sides, right? That, that's how that kind of works. Remember, you cannot. By the way. Are you, oh, I just need an answer. Are you allowed to list a home and facilitate the buyer? Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. Are you allowed to have a listing and a customer? No representation? No, no, yes. Right. So you should never have a facilitator agreement with when you're doing a listing. If you do dual agency, it could be a customer, refer it, you could not facilitate. Good. All right, who's next? This person is not going to offer a compensation, and that sounds like a Jelena move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not All right, Jelena, what do we got here? Um, for me? Yeah, but you doing a retainer fee? No, sorry. No. no. Perfect. Um, seller shall pay broker compensation how much? 4%. 4%. Great. And uh, is there a dollar amount you want here? Real blank, whatever's more. Um, and are you are not paying out a a uh, zero. Uh, so you want this to be zero on both? Yeah, I love it. And then we go to here, and what happens here? Shall not. Shall not. Great. So do we have to do anything here? No. No. Perfect. Good. Everyone get this now. This is the most interesting spot, right? This is the spot that gets in the way. We thought it was there or the other, not both. Yeah. Questions about this? Okay, 
What's one aha from the fire rep so far? Say BAC. Needs to say BAC. <laughs> That's right. That's a good one. What's another one? More. Yes. More than you, know. you can always take less, you can't take more. Okay? Unless you amend it. Unless, you, can't you can always amend it. Amendments are great. Yes. <laughs> are we gonna get we no questions? We're only doing ahas on the buy side. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Any other ahas on the buy side? You must have them before you show a house. That's the other aha I want you to have. You must have them before you show a house. And you cannot take more than it's on that floor. Unless you amend it. Unless you amend it. Yeah. All right. Terry, yes, what's the question? Um, with the amendment. If there there is an amendment, would it be good for our, our broker not to give us the wording? So wording, yeah. It's done. It's all right on the form. Okay. It's made for it. Okay. Uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's a brand new one. But you know what? Probably can't change. be good. Most of these are going to change by this time next year. <laughs> After being <laughs> used to be What is that form called? <clears throat> We're keep pulling it up right now. Thank you. Uh, amendment. Addendum amendment contract fire representation. Is this the one? It's not commercial, right? Oh, I had the right one. Does it say commercial? It does say commercial. Is it the same? Yeah, this is this is a four. So you had to choose are we amending or we're whatever. Listing so, contract. An amendment <laughs> makes a change to a contract and an addendum adds to a contract. So I actually have no idea why you would ever use it. Here's the yeah. deal. This is what they know, and this is what brokers said. People always call me and they said, should they use an addendum or amendment? And what they say, it doesn't matter what it's called, it's the form, right? So the form, it really doesn't matter what the, if the power of this is in the what's next underneath it, right? So, but Kelly is completely right. Adding to, amending, we're changing it. So you would amend this there, or you would amend here, Seller or buyer and buyer's agent agree to 3%. Buyer, buyer agent agree to 4%. Buyer, buyer. It's a commercial form. It's the same. It's. it's. <laughs> 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 Get it right. Commercial. I think this is the second. Oh, yeah, that was not a commercial. That would be like. That would look like this? Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> it's twelve ten. Did we say what time this class ends? No. Keep going. Um, I have a question. <laughs> so uh, should we have wording? It doesn't really have wording regarding an amendment to the buyer's agent compensation. What should we say? Literally, what you're going to say. Like you're changing the compensation from three percent to. We'll scroll up. This is no up. Oh, I see. I just had a facilitator. Yeah. No, just this like is the same form. Just so, like if you're going to change a price on a on a contract, and you're you're just going to say what it is. Buyer's agent shall be compensated three percent. And if you're splitting that, that needs to be on this document, right? Or yeah. something to yeah. that extent. Yeah. yeah. So if I were saying it right, I'm we're at two seven. They're offering three. Let's say that we're doing a split of this, or I'm just. I would just say on here, um, buyer's agent to compensate or contribute 0.3% of buyer's closing costs, right? I still get my two seven, she still gets. Then you still have to do an amendment for the closing costs. So right. this would just be for the buyer rep, and then you're gonna do an additional amendment if you're giving them closing costs because the lender needs that. That's right. So because if you're splitting it, right? What? Because it's one is for the now. buyer rep listing facilitator, and the other amendment is for the purchase agreement. Oh. Uh, right. Yeah. 
But it, yeah, it wouldn't be an amendment to the purchase agreement because you want. If you're contributing to your. Okay, so we did. Okay, gotcha. I got you. Yeah. All right, you ready for the PA? This, by the way, listing, let's go ahead and do three ahas on the listing agreement. Number one. I think it's important to understand those lines. I want to say, I don't remember what the line number was. But 405, 406. Yeah, those. No, not that's the that's purchase agreement on the listing contract. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but page one, where it was just like, if you're paying out the higher thing. Lines 120, like, yeah, all of it. What means what means what? What means what means what? If it's, if it's, if you put on there only yours, so let's say you say, I charge 3%, and this is where I don't want us to get, this is where you will suffer harm, right? Hang out with wise, there's a, there's a, a proverb that says, I used to love this with students, it says, uh, hang out with the wise and you will become wise. Hang out with fools and you will suffer harm. So I really like suffer harm. Here's where you will suffer harm. If you on on the line put three percent, and then you say whatever they pay out will reduce it by three percent, you will suffer harm. You will get zero dollars. Right? Yeah, amend that though before it closes. <laughs> if the seller agrees. I think the other aha I have, Kevin, is um, if if we shouldn't be using the word like historically, um, how to explain 2.7 percent payout, especially if we're intending on still collecting 3.3. I'm currently wrapping my brain on how to. Do we call? Do you have any any thoughts? Anyone have any top of your head scriptures of how you'd say that? We can alley that up. Why why two point seven percent? Why are we paying out two point seven percent? Because it's industry standard. Anyone have thoughts on that? Why two point seven? Well it's a round number. <laughs> well, I think I know that when we were doing like the mock listing and buyer presentation, Rick was pushing me on having like the listing percentage and the buyer percentage separate. And I think my aha right now is our listing percentage will be typed in on our sheet, but the buyer percentage will be like, and, and then it could be filled in, even just on our internal marketing form, because then it's, you know, a, a lot of professional buyer's agents charge between this amount and this amount, what would you like to offer? And then I'm not shifting what I'm charging. Yep. It becomes focused on that. And and then it's like a range. So it's not industry standard. If they want to offer a 3% buyer payout, great. Like, again, I don't think that's a bad thing. But I think as I'm sitting here, it's like, that's what I think I'm going to do. So a lot know. of professions. Say your thing again. Many professionals. So, so Kevin, our, our fees to sell your home are going to vary depending on which package you pay. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, so our our fee for the listing to take on your listing and market your home is everything we do is three point three percent. Then have the option as we've discussed to pay out a buyer's agent. We've discussed why to do that. A lot of professional buyers agents charge between two point seven and three percent. Is there is there a number that sticks out to you that you'd like to offer? What do you guys think of that? I like it. I, I also, I also have. Send that out. <laughs> I, I would say we can't send it out, and here's the reason. Um, my concern on the compensation piece um, is DOC is saying compensation is negotiable. It's always what I like about this is I'm I'm a professional real estate agent myself. I see a lot of other professional real uh, buyers agents are charging somewhere between. But yet whatever this amount. So it makes sense to maybe for us to offer this. It's not a standard. We don't have to. Negotiations are always part of, of this cost. Um, but I would avoid historically, because that says this is, was a common, this is what we did. No, it's always negotiable, but I like I like that. This is what I'm seeing in the industry. However, Kevin, the challenge with that is that it is historical. So 
there is, you know, part of the part of the conversation that I have with the both the sellers and the buyers, if we if this comes up, is that over time there has been, uh, you know. 2.7, for example, over time is a number that, from my professional opinion and past experience, is a fair compensation to buyer's agents. And as a result, that has become a general expectation of what the value of a buyer's agent is in a real estate transaction. Um, therefore, it's my professional opinion that I would like to pay out what I feel is fair to a buyer's agent and you can decide whether or not you agree with that. And by fair, this is what I mean. And I say this about the 3.3 on the other side, and I'll get through this in just a second. John, listen. By fair, by fair, um, this is something that's going to allow people to run their business, to pay the expenses that they have in their business, to pay for their car, to do the showings, to do the marketing, everything that a buyer's agent does and run through all the stuff that a buyer's agent does. It's not going to make them a millionaire. It's not going to, you know, but it is, it's, it's what I consider fair compensation for the work that's being done by a good buyer's agent. On the listing side, there is typically going to be some more expenses out of pocket for a listing agent that comes in the, you know, in the, in the sense of this and this and this and this, right? <clears throat> and therefore their compensation for a listing agent is oftentimes higher. And this is why I feel that 3.3 is fair. Again, I'm not making you know millions of dollars on this and so on and so forth, but it is it is fair compensation for the amount of work that's done. Yeah. So you're kind of aligning it with what you're doing, and also setting a standard for what the because because there's we cannot change the fact that buyers agents expectations are 2.7 around there. You know when I started it was 3.15. Yeah. You know so but and some people take less, some people will take more. All those different. Yeah. So that's my, my concern is just I'll, I'll if you have a reason to explain what your compensation or why you'd want to offer to I, both of those work in more words, fewer words, or or whatever. Avoid things like we we have to. Uh, this is the standard. This is you know not negotiable. This is what this is what. By the way, you can say sometimes a good negotiator is. Uh, are you willing to reduce your commission? Ask. Are you willing to reduce your? No. Do you have any other questions before we get started? <laughs> right. That's negotiation. No one's saying you have to reduce your commission in order to. You know, there's different ways to negotiate. Um, but it's it is words that we can get in trouble with are industry standard. Um, this is what we see all the time. This is what buyer agents expect to get paid. The reason I like professional, and I, I like yours too, Brown. The reason I like, I see many professional agents, there are a whole bunch of spectrums, all right? You some you see in the sign, I'll, we'll list for 1%. Well, there's negotiation on different things, but. What if you relate it to, going off of what Bethany said, like relating it to a term, because when you're writing an offer for a buyer, you're, you're telling them what you're seeing in other purchase agreements or yeah. what you're getting in other offers, like we're seeing 5% over asking right now or those kind of things. But if you're making that more of just a term in a contract that's the norm, not the normal, but like, yeah. well, even like a closing date. Well, when are we closing? Typically, you know, 30 to 45 yeah. days out. Like, what if we just change it to be in those kind of, in that kind of sense? That's what we're doing. We're yeah. adding it as another term that we're yeah. negotiating. Yeah, and I, I like I like it. The reason I don't want to rip too much on that piece is because um, if people are doing different things, that's great, right? That's what the market's supposed to be. If everyone says the exact same thing or does, that's when we get in trouble. And I don't want to be part of the trouble. KW, by the way, when they got the lawsuit, one of the challenges with KW is we train people, which is good, how to keep our commissions at a certain spot. Rob, that's a Rob Daniels thing. Are you gonna re, uh, reduce your commission? No. Any other questions? Right? I'm teaching everyone to say the same thing, which seems like the buyer, the consumer didn't have an option. Right, right. Which, yeah, yeah. Agree or disagree? Okay, let's okay. go to the purchase agreement. This was, wait, they asked Oh, this. yes. So this is how you do not want to fill it out because 
you will make zero dollars. Yeah, don't and, don't do that. That's one of the you want to make sure you're getting paid. That that's a good question throughout the time. Am I gonna get paid? Is this right? Will I get paid? And if all else fails, what do you do? Call Kevin. No. Yeah. All else fails. <laughs> all else fails, you read the contract. Read the contract. <laughs> if all else fails, read the contract. All right, this um let's go to the uh PA real quick. The PA only a couple things have changed. One is written statement. Uh, they've taken away some of the uh, boxes on written statement. And the other, uh, see, spacebar didn't work for you, did it? I have a challenge all the time. That's that's right. Yeah, but you had it right. No, I didn't. it said nothing. Um, written statement. And then the other part is the compensation. The compensation is the one that we probably spent a little bit of time on. Um, the compensation is line 405. Um, go written statement real quick. Written statement. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, financing. Section. No. There's finance. One more keep going up. Oh, keep going. Yeah, right here. Financing condition. If worse mortgage writ right. So this spot, if buyer can't secure fund funding, uh it does not close by the closing date, or we're gonna do written statement, right? Written statement. The reason you do written statement is we're moving it up from the closing date. That's what written statement's about. Is we're we're gonna have answers before the closing date. So written statement, oftentimes, what do you see for written statement? Two weeks before closing. Two weeks before closing. Yeah, I, I, that's a that's super common. Right. For purpose of this contingency, written statement means a written statement prepared by the buyer's uh, mortgagee or lender after the final acceptance date that the buyer is approved for a loan specified in the purchase agreement, not pre-approved, by the way, including first, both first mortgage and subordinate financing, if any, and stating that an appraisal satisfactory to the lender has been completed. Should you get a written statement without the appraisal being done? No. No, unless it has been waived and the appraisal stating conditions required by the lender uh, to close. If, they, if the lender says to you, hey, we don't need an appraisal, you're getting such a great deal, your purchase price is just right. We don't need an appraisal. Uh, we can now write a written statement that they're ready to move forward. If if you get something that looks like, well, this isn't really a written statement um, because I know the appraisal hasn't been done. I've never been told it's been waived. Written statement comes after the appraisal, okay? Comes after. The next spot says, for uh, upon delivery of the written statement to the seller or licensee representing the seller, the obligation for satisfying all conditions required by the mortgage originated lender, except those conditions specified below, are deemed accepted by buyer. Work orders to be completed by seller. That's not part of the written statement. If you don't get those done, that's on the seller. Any other financing terms agreed to be completed by the seller, like the seller needed to get this done in order for financing to happen. Any contingency for the sale uh, and closing buyer's property pursuant. This is saying, look, if you have the contingency for sale on or the closing of the buyer's property on the purchase agreement, the written statement is subordinate to that. That if that property doesn't close, the written doesn't mean they can move forward. The written statement is subordinate to that that uh, contingency. Um, if, if upon, del uh, upon delivery of the written statement, if the purchase agreement does not close on the stated closing date for any reason that related to financing, including, but not limited to the interest and rate or discount points, if any, then seller may, not seller has to, but seller may at seller's option, declare this purchase agreement canceled, in which case this purchase agreement is canceled. 
If seller declares this purchase agreement canceled, buyer and seller shall immediately get a uh, sign a cancellation of purchase agreement conforming, uh, confirming said cancellation, directing all earnest money be paid here, be forfeited to the seller. If it doesn't close, you had a written statement, it doesn't close, the seller can say, we're done, all that money forfeited to the seller. Pause. That is true, 100% true written in language. You cannot, until you get that cancellation signed, you can't release earnest money. You, so sometimes that would be a lawsuit. There are different challenges on this, but the law in this agreement, your agreement says that money is uh, given back to or retained by the seller for liquidated damages. In alternative, seller may seek all other remedies allowed by law, notwithstanding the language of the preceding paragraph, seller may declare this purchase agreement canceled. If the reason the purchase agreement does not close was due to seller's uh, failure to complete work orders, that's not going to be part of it. The same thing we saw in the three before. 104, if written statement is not provided, so I gave written statement, it doesn't close, that money directly goes per contract, is forfeited to the seller, right? They gave written statement, then they didn't close because financing fell through. That's fine. Seller retains earnest money is what it says. This says, this next spot, if written statement is not provided uh, by the date specified on line 78, which is two weeks before closing. Hang on. August 29th was our written statement due date. That's what we wrote into the purchase agreement. If the 30th comes, and the written statement wasn't received, and we didn't amend the contract to move it to a new date, that means written statement was not received. That's By right. the date on that line, unless amended. Right. And so if that happens, the seller's option is to declare the purchase agreement canceled by written notice to the buyer at any time prior to seller receiving written statement, in which case this purchase agreement is canceled. In the event of the seller declares a purchase agreement canceled, buyer and seller shall immediately sign a cancellation of purchase agreement, confirming said cancellation and directing all earnest money be paid, either retained by the seller or forfeited. That's where you're, you're able to get there. Or retained by the seller or returned, as well I should have said, not forfeited. If written statement is not provided and the seller has not previously canceled this purchase agreement, the purchase agreement is canceled as of the closing date. This is... This first part, I received written statement. It didn't close. Seller retains money. Okay. These next two, so, uh, written statement was not provided. Seller can cancel. This is what happens to the money. Now, uh, written statement is not provided. We came to closing. This statement says what happens to the money. Written statement was provided. Oops, it wasn't provided, it wasn't provided. What happens? Okay. Good. Clarify anything? We get to closing. You gave me a written statement. You didn't close because of financing. My sellers did everything they're supposed to. Who retains their earnest money? Sell. Yes. Written statement was never provided. We got to closing. You didn't close because of financing. Who retains the money? Whatever that box is. Nice. That's it. All right. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Written statement date comes. Not getting it from the lender. Seller, the box is checked to refund to the buyer. Seller's like, I have no confidence in the buyer. I want to cancel. Today, 29th. Written statement due date. I have no confidence. They can give you the written statement. If they can give the written statement by the end of the day, then they can cancel. Right, but they can't. Now it's the 30th. Well, now it's the 30th. They didn't give me the written statement. I have no confidence. Yeah. I want it says the buyer's going to retain the money. Yeah. I want out. Then you sign a cancellation that says you can agree because the written statement wasn't given. You give up the. You, yeah. Buyer and that has happened the, day, the next day. The next day. Can it happen a week later? Yeah, at any time without written statement being provided to do that. Yeah, say you haven't given a written statement. 
we had it on here on the 29th. He didn't provide it. It's putting the sign of cancellation. Thanks for that. Nice job. All right, 405. It's like you see a lot of these contracts or something. <laughs> okay, 405, this is the other spot. If you're going to get compensated on the PA, the other brokerage is not paying you a co-op um, commission, you're going to get compensated on the PA, this is what you'd write. 405, seller's con contribution to buyer's broker compensation. Seller agreed to uh, pay buyer's broker's compensation at closing 3%. Because that's what I have on my contract. You don't want to put more than you have on your contract. Or you can put less. You can put less. Yeah. And then on your compensation disclosure, you would you could still collect your three. You could collect two from the seller and one from right. the buyer. Right. Yep. Now what your client needs to understand is they will now need to bring more money to closing. Yep. Questions about this? Um, so you're putting zero in the sale price? Or wait, not in sale price, but in the other. Whichever, yeah, because it's whatever is greater. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a cooperating broker compensation form, do not fill this out. Yeah. You know what? I would not put zero dollars in there. I like the link. The reason not to put zero dollars in there is because it doesn't say on your other form it says whatever is greater. This four. This does not say whatever is greater. You're going to pay three percent or zero. Oh. Well, how do you decide? That's that's bad on this form. Tricky. Yeah, you don't want that to be zero here. It's one or the other. It's, it's one three or, percent yeah. or flat fee. So the per a percent or a flat fee. Yeah. The percentage is what has been agreed between um, you and the buyer. Buyer. Yeah, on your compensation. And only so that you not have a cooperating broker on the other side. Yep. And your buyer wants the seller to pay the commission. Yep. Because potentially your multiple offers and your buyer doesn't want you to ask for that because it's an additional term just like anything else. And they're a cash buyer anyway. They have tons of cash. Yeah. The only challenge is if that doesn't happen, if they say don't put it on there, what you want to do is check with lending and make sure they can bring an additional 3% to pay you. Or whatever your or whatever your yeah. buyer brokers. Yeah. So you wouldn't even, you're saying wouldn't zero in dollar amount, but if you don't have to fill it out at all, just leave it completely. Yeah, same as the rest of the PA. Questions? Now let's go use these forms. There is much. Let's go use them. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you for Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs>